Ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, people of all generation, if you're a football fan, I hope you're excited as much as I am. Because this Sunday, January 13th, Afghan 2024 kicks off in the Ivory Coast. If you don't know what Afghan is, that's Africa Cup of Nations. Come on now, football fans, you have to know these things. Now, I know a lot of football fans, especially those that watch the European leagues, aren't too into the international tournaments unless it's the World Cup. But come on, Afghan, like, that's the best international tournament. Sorry for those of you who are more into the Euros, but yes, Afghan is where it's at. You know, you have the likes of Victor Boniface, uh, Victor Osimhen of Nigeria and Napoli, Riyad Mahrez, Mohamed Salah. I mean, I could go on and on. A lot of the top name strikers and attackers that you see across, playing across the European leagues right now, they are from the continent of Africa and they will be at this tournament. So, like I said, this Sunday, January 13th, in Cote d'Ivoire, it kicks off. And I'm just here to give you a quick rundown of the groups, um, some of the key main players that will be taking part in the competition this year. And for the first time, unlike other years, there is not a clear favorite or at least two clear favorites. This is how brilliant, how exceptional, and in the voice of the great Cat Williams, this, my friends, is going to be a stupendous tournament. Yes. That's how great this tournament, the tournament is going to be. So without further, further ado, let me get to it real quickly. Now in group A, group A you have Ivory Coast, Nigeria, Equatorial Guinea, and Guinea-Bissau. Now Ivory Coast team is not stuck like years gone by, but they still have a pretty decent um, attacking force. The likes of Sebastian Halle, uh, Nicolas Pepe trying to, you know, make a comeback after his failed move to Arsenal. He's trying to do his thing. Um, Sesu Fafana, uh, Seku Fafana, I should say. He started for Lens last year in the in League One before making a big money move to Saudi Arabia this this season. But he was one of the standout um, midfielders in right through of Europe last season, and a lot of big name teams in Europe wanted. His services but he decided to go to the Middle East and play his trade and um, it's Saudi Arabia. There is also um, a young center back um, 20 year old Usman Diamande want to look out for for the future very solid very excellent I mean, beyond his years center back so want to look out for in this tournament and like I said uh, Nigeria is also in this group and Nigeria is stuck with attacking talent so much so, like some of the, the 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 names, the top striker names that they have didn't even make the squad, but they still brought um, the likes of uh, Victor Osimhen, like I said, uh, Victor Boniface, um, Chuck Weezy, you know, just to name a few of their top talents that will be on showcase in this tournament uh, this year. Uh, moving on to Group B. Um, the seven-time winners, the team with the most uh, Afghan trophies, Egypt, they will be looking to come out of this group as more than likely group winners. They have the likes of, um, well, Mohamed Salah. He is the the key villain, you know. They have players like uh, El Nene, which, you know, not so much big name, but once Salah is there, anything is possible. And this team goes where Salah goes. And right now he's in really good form, just leaving Liverpool heading to Afghan. So seven time winners um Egypt, they'll be looking to add another trophy to their cabinet. They are joining Group B by the likes of Ghana, who has the multi talented uh, Mohamed Kudus, you know, a young talented player, plays for West Ham right now, family of Ajax plays anywhere across the front, also plays in central midfield. They're missing their um, former captain and talisman, um, Thomas Partey, through injuries. But Mohammed, the, like I said, the likes of Mohamed Kudus, um, the Ayu brothers, um, Iñaki Williams, you know, some of the players that should help to 
at least take them into the, the, the knockout round of this tournament. Um, they're joined by Cape Verde and Mozambique who, even though they're minnows, you know, did make a good account for themselves in qualifiers. So, Group B should be a pretty decent group as well. Uh, moving on, Group C has um, Senegal, who has another um, very familiar face in Sadio Mane, their talisman. You know, he's flying his trade over there in Saudi Arabia as well. Hasn't been the best starts in the Saudi, Saudi league for him, but he is still Sadio Mane. And um, one player I'm looking out for to make a mark in this tournament is Nicholas Jackson. It hasn't really worked out for him at um, Chelsea thus far this season, but I have seen him in La Liga for Villarreal and it's a completely different player than I'm seeing at Chelsea right now. So hopefully him being jo joined up with his national team, you know, and probably being a bit more comfortable or less pressure on him, we should see a different um, Nicholas Jackson. They also have um, Ismail Assar um, of Watford, who, if you watch the English League like two seasons ago, he was a very um, pacey and skillful winger. So, um, Senegal team that, you know, they're expected to leave the group with um, Cameroon, who joins them as second favourites from that group. Their captain and talisman, Bubakar, is still the one leading the line for them. Not um, a team with a lot of big names. Um, their goalkeeper, Onana, the famous Onana from Manchester United, he's probably one of the biggest names in the squad. So that goes to tell you, you know, the name players that this squad has. But one thing with Cameroon, when they don't have the big name players, is when they tend to, is when they normally tend to perform better. You know, they perform better as a team more than with a bunch of stars. So Cameroon I'm the second team in that group, followed by Guinea and the Gambia. Now Guinea also have um, a pretty decent squad. They have one of the hardest striker, young strikers in Europe right now in Garassi. You know, they also have um, Farmer Liverpool and Leipzig uh, midfielder Naby Keita in their squad as well. And Guilla Vogue of the French League. So, you know, a pretty decent group that one. Um, I wouldn't say they are the group of death, but that is a strong group, group C that is. Moving on to group D, um, Algeria with, um, you know, their talisman who moved on from Man City, he's now in the Saudi League as well. Yeah, a lot of um, former English League players, uh, Premier League winners have moved on to the Saudi League. But yes, Riyad Mahrez, you know, he's the one leading the attack for Algeria and they're a very rounded squad they have a solid midfield you know with players like of um Bentaleg family of Tottenham um, Ismail Benassa family of Arsenal you family of Arsenal you would um product he's now at um, AC Milan you know so they, they have a very solid squad um Algeria does they're joining group D by Burkina Faso the Burkina Bees of um Triori, um, young winger family of um, is it Chelsea? And who else did he play for? Oh, no. Sorry about that. I'll get back to that one. But yes, um, the Burkina Bees, you know, they're expected to leave that group along with Algeria. But you know, it's not the game is not played on paper. So the likes of Mauritiana and um, Angola, who hasn't been in a major tournament in a long while they will fancy themselves to make it out of that group um actually it's gonna be um so it's six groups 20 24 teams six groups um group winners and then um best third place teams will make it through to the, the um, round of 16. um next is group e with um tunisia not a lot of big names um slimani is their talisman he's their um central midfielder you know um but not not a lot of big names on that squad like i said but still a pretty decent squad the, the north africans are actually always they always um represent themselves well in major tournaments whether it be the world cup or afghan you know so 
Tunisia, um, Mali, with the likes of um, Haidar and Yves Busuma of Tottenham. They are expected to leave the group again as the top two teams. But the minnows of that group, um, South Africa and Namibia. You know, South Africa qualifying for the face first major tournament in a very long time as well. They will, they will want to say something about, you know, who goes through to the knockout rounds. So, pretty decent group as well. And the uh, sixth and final group, Group F. Morocco, to me, one of the strongest squads, or one of the most rounded squads in um, this year's AFCON. They have um, Hakimi of PSG and Nesri of Seville. With a bunch of um, other good players, um, they have a couple players uh, Bayern Munich. You know, they are a pretty rounded squad. Like I said, they are not the fanciest of teams, but like you can see from the past World Cup, how far they made it to. If they're to follow suit in this tournament, then who knows? This could be a, a, a trophy for them, another tro another title for them, another African title, I should say. Um, they're joining Group F by um, DR Congo. Zambia and Tanzania, one of the winners of um, African football. But so yes, that's the six groups. But um, like I said, no clear favorites really. You know, Ivory Coast they're hosting, so you know they will wanna do this for their, their um, for their public. You know, Nigeria, pretty good squad. Ghana, pretty rounded as well. You know, San Senegal with some attacking force. Egypt with some attacking force. Um, Morocco, Algeria, those are the teams that, you know, Ghana, those are the teams that are expected to at least, you know, be there, be at least in the quarterfinals. Mali, you can never count them out. Um, Guinea is a pretty decent squad as well. You know, they're a team on the horizon, so who knows. But let's wait and see. One-man tournament. Um, finals will be in uh, February, the middle of February either the 14 or the 15 but let's wait and see who makes it there but give me your predictions now in the comments don't forget give me a prediction who do you think will win this year's tournament i am a ghana and nigeria fan you might ask how is it i have two teams you know i grew up in jamaica where you know everything are our roots what i got got from growing up our roots was from ghana so i was always a ghana fan are a fan of everything Ghana, I should say. And then 94, when the Nigeria team made it to the World Cup, they became my second team. So for me, it's Ghana or Nigeria, you know? Even when they're not the best teams in the tournament, it's always Ghana or Nigeria. Um, but let me see, know in the comment section, who do you think has the best chance of winning this year's tournament? And who do you expect to see in the finals? And also, who is your team? Who is your Afghan team? Because especially if you are, you know, from African descent, I expect you to have an African team that you cheer for. You could be a Brazilian and a Brazilian fan, an Argentine fan, a Germany fan. It doesn't matter which European or South American team you cheer for. You have gotta have an African team. So let me know who's your choice for this year's Africa African title. Until next time, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share. Stay safe. Oh, and Happy New Year. All the best for 2024. Hopefully you get to see more of me and more entertaining, educating and interesting videos. Stay safe.